call the meeting of the uh, Board of Regents of Delmar College District to order at 1 p.m. on Tuesday, <coughs> September 10th. Uh, we do have uh, seven of our board members present. Uh, Ms. Estrada is ill today, and Ms. Avert is in Washington, D.C., with a community contingency from the United Corpus Christi Chamber of Commerce on our Coastal Bend to D.C. trip. Uh, so we thank you all for your attendance today. Uh, we are going to open uh, with a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Mr. Rivas, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. And would you please read with us the Del Mar College mission statement? Delmar College provides access to quality education, workforce preparation, and lifelong learning for student and community success. Thank you. Delmar College is streaming live audio and video from the official Board of Regents meeting on the college's website in real time, with the exception of portions of the meeting considered as closed session by statute. We will begin our meeting today with recognitions of faculty and students. Uh, Dr. Beth Lewis is going to lead us in those. Thank you. There is no higher honor presented by Del Mar College to its faculty than the Dr. Eileen Creighton Award for Teaching Excellence. During fall convocation on August 19th, the college announced Dr. Brian Stone, Professor of History in the Social Sciences Department as the 2019 Creighton Award recipient. Dr. Stone, would you come up please, so we can stare at you awkwardly? <laughs> Dr. Stone is the 18th recipient of the award, which DMC first established in 2002 and named in honor of Dr. Eileen Creighton, Dean Emeritus of Arts and Sciences. The award represents the late educator's legacy as a master teacher during her 41-year career at the college and serves as the benchmark faculty must emulate to receive the honor. Former students describe Dr. Stone as experienced, patient, compassionate, fair, respectful, and an inspirational educator. They also note his teaching style reflects demonstrated passion, enthusiasm, and an understanding of history that makes learning enjoyable and interesting. Dr. Stone has served on numerous Del Mar College committees, including chairing the General Education Committee, the Faculty Council, and the Promotion Rank Tenure and Evaluation Task Force. He has provided interview for video documentaries and national public radio, and has published many professional articles and reviews. His first book, The Chosen Folks, Jews on the Frontiers of Texas, won the Southern Jewish Historical Society Book Prize in 2011. He also edited his second book, Memories of Two Generations, A Yiddish Life in Russia and Texas, that was published in 2016. Dr. Stone earned a bachelor's degree in English and his doctoral degree in American Studies and Civilization from the University of Texas at Austin, go Horns. He earned his master's degree in English from the University of Virginia. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Brian Stone, this year's winner of the Dr. Eileen Creighton Award for Teaching Excellence. Oh, wow. Thank you all. This is exactly how it is in class every day. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Um, I, I don't want to take time, but it is, this, this is a tremendous honor. The, this award is, is just one of the greatest things that we could hope uh, as faculty to receive, to be recognized for what we do, uh, recognized for what we, we, we hope we're accomplishing, just to have that confirmed with something like this is really marvelous. So thank you to the college. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Next up, in August 2019, the House of Delegates of the American Bar Association, acting on the recommendation of the Standing Committee on Paralegals, granted approval to the paralegal program at Del Mar College for a period of seven years. The DMC paralegal program, under the direction of Gail Dorn, Gail, we'll come to you. becomes the 12th college program in Texas to be ABA approved. There are four in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, five in the Houston region, one in the Panhandle, and one in the Hill Country. We have the only American Bar Association approved program south of San Marcos. 
To receive this approval, the college program had to produce an extensive compliance document, host an on-site review from the ABA, then gain a positive recommendation from the standing committee to the House of Delegates who ultimately decide to withhold or grant approval, and we're very glad that they decided to grant approval. Mm -hmm. Please join me in congratulating Gail Dorn and the paralegal team on the successful application for American Bar Association approval. I've spent the last three weeks giving gifts out, thanking people, sending emails, but I've been remiss. The people that I really needed to thank, I haven't thanked yet, but I'm going to, and that's our students. They provided the support and the motivation over the last four years that we've been working on this, and I've even had four students delay their graduation so they could graduate from an ABA-approved program. And uh, they're going to get my thanks today. They think it's going to be an A's, but surprise to them. <laughs> um, and I give an omen today when I came to my office, I looked out the window, and out there was a full rainbow that went from all the way, and it looks like it ended at Del Mar College. So I took that as an omen. We've expanded our community, not only from our local community, but we've now gone statewide and nationalwide. And thank you all for your support. Thank you, Gail. And we have one more. U.S. Legal Support is a national lit litigation support company with over 1,000 employees, a network of nearly 5,000 independent court reporting professionals, and more than 85 locations around the country. Last month, working with Suzette Weiss, Del Mar College's instructor in court reporting, and Suzette, normally I would ask her to come up, but she has a broken foot, so we're not going to make her do that. Uh, just wait. To everybody. Okay. Um, the company announced the first incentive-based award for students in the court reporting program. The scholarship is $1,000 for each fall and spring semester for one student who is passing all classes with good attendance and can produce a minimum of 160 words per minute on the stenograph machine. This is the latest win for the students in court reporting. In the last few months, Suzette and her team have earned a $500 annual scholarship from Veritex, and another company, Project Steno, has made the commitment to provide eligible students with tuition assistance of $150 a month per student, plus paying for their monthly real-time coach subscription fees of $66 a month. Please join me in acknowledging the court reporting faculty's commitment to student success in the court reporting program. I have the next recognition. Um, the National Society of Leadership and Success is the nation's largest honor society. Students are selected by their college for membership based on their academic standings or leadership potential. With 600 plus chapters, the society currently has over 1 million members. The society provides a step-by-step -step program for members to build their leadership skills through participation at their campus. The Del Mar College chapter has had 1,934 students inducted since 2011, and currently we have 896 active students. The Delmar College cha chapter has uh, appeared in the Society's National Advertisement as a chapter of best practice, and also the Delmar College chapter made the Founders List in 2019, recognized as a chapter for its outstanding efforts in the area of chapter best practices, completing 10 more pillars of success. The Del Mar College Chapter Advisor, Ms. Beverly Cage, received the Leadership Development Award uh, in 2019 for, for providing valuable insights and inspiration to the National Society of Leadership and Success National, National Advisory Board. Beverly, my students, congratulations. Thank you. I just want to say thank you on behalf of the National Society of Leadership and Success and these are examples of great leaders here at Del Mar College and, and who says that learning doesn't happen outside the classroom because it does. And this is a, a, a learning opportunity to help our students build their leadership skills. So thank you.
congratulations to all. It is a, uh, it's always joyous to uh, see our students here. It's also joyous to see our faculty and the other recognition uh, because we know without you, the students wouldn't be learning. So thank you all very much for being here today. And, and this is, I think, our, one of our favorite parts of the meeting. Adjournment might be the other piece, but the <laughs> starting this way is always our favorite way to start. Thank you, thank you again. Uh, we are now going to move into our college president's report, Dr. Escamilla. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, beginning on August 16th, I'd like to talk a little bit about summer graduation. It was the first time that the college has held its summer graduation at the Selena Auditorium. There were several hundred graduates. It was a packed house. You know, we, it was the first time using this facility. There were lessons learned um, in preparation for next year's, next summer's graduation, but it was a great turnout. We had a student, uh, recent graduate, uh, give the keynote, and it was a very lively expression of his experience, shall we say. Mr. Cortinas did a great job there, but uh, it was a, a, another great uh, summer graduation for Domar College. Uh, a, few day, a few short days later, on that Monday, uh, we kicked off the year with convocation, uh, as we always do every fall, and that was a great experience to kick off the college's um, um, academic year and, and prepare um, and coordinate, communicate as much as we possibly could, all the while registering the students, the many, many students that are, that are still registering to this day uh, for various uh, parts of, of the fall semester. But uh, it was a busy uh, day on the 19th, and it was great to bring everybody back. There was great energy. We had a great lunch. It was just a great kickoff to the semester. A few short days later, we were honored to have hosted the General Land Office uh, Texas General Land Office Commissioner uh, George P. Bush at the West Campus. He was here to review or to um, t take in and, and observe our, our um, operations there, a couple different uh, aspects of it. He wanted to see our workforce development uh, programs on the West Campus, largely around the uh, uh, process technology programs and the like. Um, and then he also, um, because the General Land Office um, manages the Hurricane Harvey funds, the Rebuild Texas grant, um, he was able to and, and, and asked that he um, was able to take a little tour of our, of our operation and our carpentry class that we offer out there at the West Campus. Uh, he was installing windows and doors and doing the things of, of, those nature, of, of that nature and had a really great visit. Um, I've got to say, one of the nicest people you ever want to meet George P. Bush was, and, and um, just a real gentleman, very humble, and introdu introduced himself to everybody as George. I thought that was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Um, about a little over a week later, we had us another um, momentous visit by our own uh, U.S. Senator, Senator John Cornyn, who came to specifically focus on the Rebuild Texas uh, grant and its efforts with the carpentry classes. And as you know, um, those, um, his affiliation with uh, Corpus Christi, he has deep roots here in Corpus Christi. Um, his father attended Del Mar College, uh, was a local dentist at one point, and has roots um, going, going back sometime in his history and feels very, very strongly and very fondly about, about uh, Corpus Christi and Del Mar College. It was a great visit. Um, Chair uh, Carol Scott was with us on that visit, and um, Carol, do you care to say anything about the visit? Sure, I just uh, want to uh, call out Jay and his team uh, for putting together a great visit. Uh, it was a short visit. He was on the ground for maybe 45 minutes, but really had an opportunity to do some hands-on work and to visit directly with students. Heard directly from uh, some students in the carpentry program and, and all that they're doing, uh, ranging from uh, a young man in his 20s to a woman uh, who is about my age, whatever that might be, <laughs> uh, who, who wanted to, to do some rebuilding work on, on her own home. So it, it, uh, to, to be able to show the breadth and depth of that carpentry program and what it's doing and the opportunities that are there, was, was, uh, was a, they did a great job. And, and thank you to Senator Cornyn and his staff for coming to, to see us. Great. That concludes my report, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any questions for Dr. Escamilla? Seeing none, we will look at our pending business uh, report that's in our board packet. Uh, you'll see that October is going to be a long day. We have quite a few reports and, and some, some updates, uh, Cleary data and others that, that are going to be discussed at our October meeting. 
We are discussing now and we'll confirm at our agenda prep meeting whether or not we will do a morning session uh, that day to, to make sure that we have time to cover all of the reports uh, that need to be done. But any uh, action items obviously will be done in our afternoon session. So please um, let us know if, if there's any conflict with that. Uh, and we are trying to do a better job of, of flushing out uh, what is coming forward. So you'll see this pending business report uh, tend to have things that we expect to be coming, whether or not they were previously discussed or not. We're trying to give you an idea of what's coming down the pike a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Any questions on our pending business? Seeing none, we will move on to our consent agenda. We have items for discussion, approval of minutes from several meetings uh, in August related to our budget adoption, the acceptance of investment and financial reports uh, for the summer. Is there a motion, excuse me, are there any items that need to be pulled for separate consideration? Seeing none, is there a motion? Mr. Rivas makes the motion to uh, approve and Dr. Sherwood seconds the motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented. Any public comment on our consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. That motion carries unanimously. Uh, our action item for today on our regular agenda is to look at uh, final adoption of our 2019 through 2024 strategic plan. Uh, Dr. Beth Lewis is going to lead us through. Do you have any introductory comments, Dr. Escamilla? I do, Madam Chair, if you don't mind. I, uh, as Dr. Lewis is getting teed up there, I'd like to um, talk a little bit about this presentation. It is one of those presentations that has been long coming. Many meetings have occurred to get us to this point of a strategic plan, of our new strategic plan for the next five years of the college. A couple of points. So thanks to all who have dedicated time, energy, resources to this effort. Um, thank you all to Regents for, the, for this, I think, five meetings that we put together to, to, to talk about and develop this plan from you all's vision to articulating to the goals and strategies uh, throughout uh, from the college to 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 um, act upon that vision. Um, that's what this plan is all about. That being said, what I'd like to say before you consider a final, uh, you have your final consideration and approval for this plan is that the most important thing about a plan is not the document. I want to emphasize that to everyone who's listening and, and go on the record of saying what is most important is the planning that occurs between 2019 and 2024. The document is a mere document. The time that we spend together facilitating, executing this plan is where it all counts. So I want to re restate that. Um, for, for all of us before uh, the, this board considers um, this plan. Um, the only other thing I'd like to say is uh, Dr. Christina Wilson wasn't able to be here with us today. Um, that was some, uh, some planning that, that, was, that was very fortuitous for her and some professional development that she couldn't miss out on. And we encouraged her to take that opportunity and, and continue with her plans. But I wanna thank her for her efforts as well to, to facilitating us to this point. That being said, Dr. Lewis is gonna talk about the plan. Thank you. As Dr. Escamilla said, one of the exciting things about doing a strategic plan is really not the plan itself, but it is the process. Because much like reaffirmation, it makes us look at ourselves. It makes us see what are we doing well, what do we need to do a little bit better on, and what are the shoot the moon goals that we need to have in there so that we're always leaning forward and always making things better for our students. As you know, DMC runs on a five-year strategic planning cycle. Uh, the current cycle is just ending today, perhaps, if, uh, if you are uh, amenable to adopting this one. The strategic planning committee, you can see, we had representation from all of these groups. Um, we've been doing this for a year now. We started our first meeting last September on the Strategic Planning Committee with uh, input from these groups of, of folks. I'll remind you that we followed the SCUP model, which is the Society for College and University Planning, and started with um, the planning cycle 
at the top there and then came in and did the stakeholder engagement. And here's where we are right now. It's interesting because my, my brain always goes to, okay, we should be through five, right? Because we've done it now. We've completed it. The circle should be complete. Um, and it's interesting that weirdly we're down almost just halfway through the cycle because the other points that we've got ahead of us are the next five years, the implementation part of it, the, uh, what we do today until August of 2024. That progress is going to be annual. It's really going to be daily because the kinds of things that you all have um, asked us to put into the strategic plan and the things that we've talked about are the daily, it's the daily work of the college. It's student success. It's how can we be better citizens of the community and train better citizens of the community in our college and, and everything that we do to help them. As a reminder, our stakeholder engagement with faculty and staff, we had six focus groups. There were 50 participants in February 2019. And a survey was available to all faculty, faculty and staff. We had four student focus groups held on East and West and CED. We had 100 students who participated in that. As you'll remember, we had four retreats with y'all. We had two half day. Uh, and two full day, and then a, an additional presentation at a board meeting. And then we had community members with online surveys, and we had picked representation from our diverse sectors of K-12, healthcare, and private industry to participate in that. And that's just a reminder of what we were doing with the focus groups. And again, a reminder of the dates that we all came together to talk about this work. So talking about the new plan as we move forward, this is a plan that was developed by the stakeholders, that all those groups of people that I just showed you a couple of slides ago, really to look at our strategic issues. And I like putting it that way. I like saying strategic issues rather than strategic problems or strategic plans or strategic issues because it's something we want to focus on but maybe we're already doing a good job and we want to do better. Maybe um, we're already doing great things and we want to do them in a, in a stronger, larger way. This new plan is tied to key performance indicators or KPIs as you well know and it's implemented intentionally by all programs and units of the college. Dr. Wilson started talking about um, at the very beginning when we started all of this, um, that we didn't want to make a shelf document, right? We didn't want to have a pretty document that everybody went, wow, look at that, that's lovely, and put it on their shelf and never looked at it again for five years until it was time to do it again. That it needed to be the kinds of things that we were doing every day, and those KPIs really focus on what we're doing and what we should be doing. So you've seen, the draft of this, you've seen um, actually the final draft of this now, and it is the plan that we are calling Aspire, Engage, and Achieve. The committee selected these three words of the name of the new plan because they really reflect the student experience that we strive to provide. We want our students, first of all, to aspire to great things and identify what they want their lives to look like. We want our students to engage with our faculty and staff with other students and with the college experience as a whole. And finally, we want them to achieve the goals that they have set for themselves. So just a brief reminder of the components of the strategic plan. Mission forms the base. And you can see if we don't know what we're doing, then everything else that goes on top of it doesn't really matter much, does it? So knowing that we're clear on our mission statement, then we can say, okay, this is why we exist. This is our mission. These are the things that we value. This is where we want to be. And this is how we're going to get there. There's that aspire word again on vision. Our core values, the characteristics, how do we do our work? What is most important to us in our core values? And of course, our mission, what we're here to do. 
I'll remind you that there are six goals that the group has identified over the past year. Each goal has several KPIs and multiple objectives. Remember that the goals are broad priority areas and you see that in the plan in front of you. Our KPIs is how we'll measure our progress toward reaching those goals. And our objectives are what we wish to accomplish. So when you look at our six goals, they are big and they are broad. The idea of completion, recruitment and persistence, academic pre preparedness and student learning, learning environments, workforce development, community partnerships and advocacy, financial effectiveness and affordability, all of the things that you as the Board of Regents and that we as the Del Mar community said, these are the things that we want to accomplish. These are the things that are most important to us. These are our goals. The operational strategic plan is still in development because we need to come together in smaller groups to decide how are we going to accomplish these goals and objectives. That's not something that can be done on a broad scale. That's something that has to be done by the people who are doing the work. Strategies are going to be developed throughout this fall and we should have the operational strategic plan part finished by next year. And here's our timeline that we have left. You can see that. I'm not going to read that to you. I do want to draw your attention to the last line there, refinement and adjustment of the plan. This is, we've said it once and we'll say it a thousand times, over the next five years, this is a living document. We're not going to be so tied to something that we said it three years ago, but you know what, things change. And maybe that's not a priority anymore for whatever reason. And maybe we've got to shift our focus to something else. So it will be constant refinement and adjustment as needed. I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. I would be remiss, and I know Dr. Wilson would want me to acknowledge and thank Carlos Gonzalez, Carlos, and Dr. Lucy James, who you've seen lead you through the discussions, and they've been just tremendously tremendously powerful in this process. So I thank them and I know Dr. Wilson will thank them also. <laughs> questions? Um, I, I have a couple of questions related to kind of what's next okay. uh, and, and what the board can expect. Um, so when you talk about the operational plan, so we understand how you all will use the plan moving forward. I understand that you're going to spend the next couple of months doing that. <coughs> will, I don't, I don't, anticipate that those plans will come back to the board for approvals because they're operational plans but what is our mechanism to make sure that we're on track yes. tell me what that follow-up looks like from our perspective absolutely you read my mind <laughs> and what we're gonna you can expect regular um, reports on the plan at least once a semester uh, to come back and report where the college is in regards to executing the, the, the rolling out uh, the strategic plan. That being said, within, within the, uh, uh, the presentations, um, there are going to be new topics because I, one of the comments that I meant to say earlier that I, I, I was remiss in, in omitting was that this is the most student outcomes focused plan that the college has had in a, in a long time. And there's going to be new to topics coming up in terms of, of uh, inputs and outputs of, of, student, uh, of students' um, experiences here. And so within those presentations, there will be smaller conversations, more focused conversations, and as needed, um, um, workshopped items and the like to, to focus specifically <laughs> on, say, retention or recruitment or what are the things we're doing to to, you know, what does the QEP look like for advising and how is the new advising model developing and so forth. So there'll be, there'll be meetings, uh, more focused meetings as needed, but for sure, broadly speaking, regular um, reports back to the board. Those have to be documented. Those have to be, we have to produce evidence um, of, of, the, um, of the implementation of this plan. And so that's what you can expect. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, Regents and everyone, 
uh, with your consideration and upon if, if it is your if it is the board's desire to approve this plan the vision mission the vision statement mission statement core value statements will be thereby affirmed and approved to move forward corresponding we will take the corresponding we will make the corresponding changes to the the B policies affected upon you all's consideration for approval from here in other words today's the approval uh, piece that we're looking for to change those um, those policies again um, these this plan um, is a college-wide plan to be consumed at all levels and utilized through our institutional effectiveness slash assessment efforts in the college as we um, operate within our units and assess the learning that's going on and this is really the foundation this is the foundation for the next five years but what i really liked is what the, the point that uh, dr lewis emphasized on it is that this is a living plan this is a living breathing plan and uh, again it is a uh, uh, a testament to the college coming together. It's the third time I've third time I've been a part of this effort, and I'm just here to say, what a what an effort it has been to get us to this point. And I'm very proud of the college for for its efforts. So it's a follow up. What are the starting points for the KPIs, and and is that something that the board will see soon, or will we? Uh, I want to know, know what our starting point is uh, so that we then understand the annual evaluation against those KPIs. So you can expect a report back, and Dr. Wilson will lead that conversation with us uh, and for us. Um, I, I think late this fall we can have an update, probably December, to say, okay, here's where we are. The dust is settled. We've got the, we've got the documents distributed. We're consuming it. We're, here's where we've mobilized to this point. And then I think at the end of spring would probably be a going into you know, late late May or the May meeting or so. December and May would be good timing. It would be the time the type of the timing um, for you all to have um, the, mo the the latest updates for where the college is as we engage the plan and and use it and consume it. Okay. The December and May related question, I guess, which is um, so. What we have with the KPIs are measures, but they're not targets. Mm -hmm. Are there going to be targets, or are we just going to look at improvement over time without a target that we're heading toward? So those targets are, that's the operationalization that we're talking about here, that we're going to be putting together and formulating together. There, are, in many cases, many of these targets, if you will, are already assessed, they're already determined. Um, it's a matter of getting this plan engaged uh, as the foundation to build from, to bring those back to you. So we're going to get into some um, 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 dashboarding. Um, we're going to continue to dashboard. Now we can dashboard uh, data and outcomes based on this plan. And that's, that's where you'll be seeing the targets and the, and, and the, and the like uh, to be measured and for your all's consideration so that you can see the movement that's actually taking place as a result of the plan. So do you think a preliminary discussion along those lines in the November, December time frame? Because yes. obviously we can't wait until May because then we're starting no. to budget for the next fiscal year already by May. So if we can understand within a couple of months what the starting point is, what the targets are, both five-year targets as well. And, and so I realize the, the annual targets may change a little bit, but oh, if sure. we don't understand what the five-year targets are, then yes. and how things roll into it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, December. So we'll look at that for no, November or December. December time. probably, okay. yeah. And are we going to be measuring ourselves against other colleges as well? So our plan, we, when we, I think we always do that, and we can have that data ready. Um, some of these, but the, the nature of, of a lot of the measures that are going to be part of this plan are we're measuring against ourselves, first and foremost. Um, we'll always evaluate and use documents such as the uh, Almanac and those other types of things to, to, make, to, make, um, to measure against. And we are largely using, we're using some of those data and some of those metrics as the basis for uh, statewide comparisons. So the answer is yes. Um, how that is teased out, we'll, we'll, we'll see that specifically. We'll point those out and probably label those as almanac statewide measures and the like. I, I don't know how much national comparisons will be there, but I think we can fold those in as well. And we've got the, the large college segment. 
what are there eight or nine large colleges? Yeah, and that 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 yes, yes, sir. And that that listing needs to be reviewed. Okay. But yeah, there's a couple in there that are way way bigger than the rest of us. So, um, but yes, d duly noted d within the category. I mean, they're statewide, and I think that's a a, a very um, um, appropriate measure to just measure against the other 49 colleges and then certainly get into our peer colleges that are our size. And then regionally, you know, there's different, you know, there's, there's, there's different things, you know, what's going on in the panhandle may not be the same, same thing as uh, here, but so, but duly noted. Okay. We'll, we'll tease those out. If, uh, if we approve this today, then our mission statement will actually change to what's on here. Yeah, that's now. what I was going to say. Today so was... We, we talked about the language different times. So what we talked about at the meetings were... Thank you for bringing that one up. I moved ahead a little too fast. So what we talked about at the meetings was reciting, moving to a vision statement. Remember, we, we, we talked about the Board of Regents being a visionary body that, that, brings, that, are, that brings the vision of the community to the college and establishes that broadest of visions for the college. And so what we'll, what we'll move to do, and as I recall, uh, Dr. Christina was leading us um, in this discussion, that we will be reciting the vision statement as opposed to the mission statement. And today will, will be the last day that we will have recited uh, the old mission statement, uh, still, still, still current for, for the next few minutes maybe. Um, but we'll be reciting the vision statement as said Regent Rivas um, it collectively. And we'll, we'll have, make sure and have that printed out in all the, the appropriate places to uh, have it available for, for us all to use. So it'll be the vision statement as opposed to the mission statement. Other questions or comments? So what I'm hearing is a, is a continued interest uh, in understanding how the college is gonna utilize the plan and how we as regents uh, understand the benchmarks and targets so that, that we have the productive discussions at this table that, that we wanna have. Um, so I think whether that's in, in workshop session or in reporting session, uh, I think there's going to be some anxiousness for us to, to get to that point. One other item, uh, the strategic, uh, strategic Planning Committee has uh, seats uh, filled by regents. And we will have, I think, two or three regents participating. I'm sorry, I don't know that number. I think it's, I know it's at least two, but maybe th up to three regents sitting and on that standing committee as well. So as to be tied into as that visioning member of the, of, of the governance structure to, um, to engage the college on an ongoing basis to, to, to experience those meetings as we develop the um, operationalizing of the, uh, of the college's area, uh, uh, units. So there'll be that as well. So if you're there's... On, I think you're on one. If there's no further discussion, then I would um, entertain a motion to adopt the strategic plan as presented and to authorize the modification of all the requisite board policies therein. Thank you, Dr. Sherwood, for that motion. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Rivas. Any other discussion on this item? Is there public comment on this item? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. That motion carries unanimously. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lewis, for standing in today. Please express our uh, thanks to Dr. Wilson. Uh, thank you to the two of you and the team. I want you to text her and say, what are, we, what are they doing? They're making major changes. I just want to see. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are three amendments so far. What should we do? I, want to see. <laughs> I just want to ask a question. Yes. Have, have we ever heard a report or any gotten anything out of what we achieved in the last strategic plan that we completed so how, how did we do in other words so so in how did we do with the last plan well in you know the I think at least we did very well um, as I look back at that plan what I've what I what I know about the past two plans and I can go back to those two plans and talk that was it, those two plans were built around positioning of the college in the community. And if, th if you think about all the monumental things that have gone on 
um, in the, with, over the past 10 years and those two plans, that was all about positioning. Positioning in the way of, of I call it uh, nurturing the affection of the community for the college, uh, so getting the building the support of the community for the college. And when you think of the, um, the 2014 bonds, the 2016 bonds notably, as well as the, um, uh, the, the efforts of the fundraising, when you think about the, the, the successful graduation uh, numbers as they continue to climb, when you think about the, the programs that have been, that have been uh, phased out and phased in and the development um, over the last uh, 10 years, um, I think um, the word success describes both plans in positioning uh, this college and this community, I think, uh, more strongly than, than it's ever been. And that's the goal, is to every, every cycle of a plan to, to be positioned stronger and to roll it out stronger. The difference with this plan now is that it is the most student-focused, specifically student-focused plan that we've had. And so um, that's my answer, and it, it, it's a big answer um, because the amount of support that has been given to this college and has that, that, it, it, that this college has developed is is enormous. South Campus was that part of our two, uh, the last strategic plan? I remember that. Yeah. Remember the strategic plan on the southwest on the the Northwest Center, yeah. establish a north establish a a Southside presence. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a mouthful, actually. The other key difference on this one is the key performance indicators. Very specific. We, we have not, that was out of some specific discussion that the board has had over the past several years. Uh, so that, that is also a, a major component that is different this time around. And, and, and remember, each, each unit at the college, a unit is the most generic term that I'm using here, whether it's a a classroom, a, a, an academic department, an academic division, a support services division, administrative division, whatever. Every one of those, food service, to the classroom, to the business office, are tied to and anchored to the program, or to, to the scope of work, which is our strategic plan. Every last unit. So it's how we lived. It's how we've lived for 10 years, and it's, it's a testament to the work of the of, 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 of our of our of the people here at the college who have engaged those last plans. And I'm, like I said at convocation, we have a very robust, strong, strong planning arm here at the college. And I think this is the strongest plan ever. Other comments? Thank you all very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The board will now uh, hear general public comments. Is there anyone here to provide general public comment? Thank you very much. Mr. Jack Gordy. Yes, I'm Jack Gordy and I live at 4118 Bray Drive. All of you sitting up there got a letter from me. Got, you should have got two letters. One of them was regarding the uh, request for public information that I sent in to Del Mar. And the college attorney didn't want to release it because he doesn't want the public to know what the money is spent on. And he wrote the Attorney General. Nothing in there that I requested was confidential. Nothing. I asked for a copy of the bill that Del Mar received. I didn't ask for nothing else, just a copy of the bill that Del Mar received and that Del Mar paid. Nothing in there is confidential. And nobody can tell me it is, and nobody can tell according to what conversation I got with the Attorney General, how can anybody declare that as confidential? The taxpayers pay for it, and I think they're entitled to know what we pay for. Nothing's confidential about a bill that Del Mar receives. So uh, it shouldn't have been held anyway. It should have been re replaced. And um, the, the other one, the same attorney, in July, in July, they paid that attorney $32,008. And 
and you getting a letter to find out how much, you will be getting a letter, what we paid for there. To me, that's a waste of money. We got a college attorney, but we're paying that guy about $300,000 a year to do simple stuff that he should be able to do. If that's not a waste, I don't know what it is. And you, the college board of regents here, should be asking for a copy of the same information that I requested. What we're paying for, I've asked this college, this board of regents over and over and over, pay attention to what's going on. You're supposed to be making sure that Del Mar does things right, but it looks to me like you're just ignoring the waste. You shouldn't be. You should be asking questions about what is being spent, just like that college, the attorney that came down from Austin, that was, a, like I said before, that was a waste of about $7,000. And this Board of Regents went along with it. That's ridiculous. And everybody's going to know it this next election. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Madam Anyone Chair, else? can I just say, I mean, yes. in, there's some factual factually incorrect statements and my offer still stands. I'm willing to meet with Mr. Gordy anytime to go over any of his specific questions, okay? Thank you. Anyone else for general public comment? Seeing none, uh, the board will now go into closed session uh, under Texas Government Code 551.071 regarding pending or contemplated litigation or a settlement offer with possible discussion and action open session and the seeking of legal advice from counsel on pending or contemplated legal matters or claims with possible discussion and action in open session. The time is 1.46 p.m. While the board has returned from closed session at 2.25 p.m., there is no action out of closed session. I uh, would like to turn your attention to our upcoming calendar uh, as the last item on our agenda. Uh, in October, we will have our regular board meeting date on Tuesday, October 8th. Again, Regents, uh, at this point in time, plan for a morning session, and we will confirm that as soon as we can. The uh, Association of Community College Trustees Annual Congress is the following week, the 15th uh, through the 19th. And then at the end of the month, uh, Over the Edge is happening on uh, Friday afternoon, the 25th, and all day Saturday on the 26th. Yours truly is going to be representing the board on, um, on the repelling wall. And so if you would like to contribute to uh, my efforts, I would so appreciate that. If not, you're welcome to rappel down the wall with me. <laughs> uh, but I will, um, I'm gonna take Dr. Escamilla's place. He's not gonna do it this year, and so uh, I'm gonna take his place on the wall. From what I understand, Valdar and I are gonna go down together. That's the plan. You'll raise a lot more money. That is a good tip. You'll raise a lot more money than I did, Regent, I assure you. <laughs> not sure about that, but we'll see. I will, I'm, I'm not above twisting arms, so. Uh, and then October, is, I mean, excuse me, November, our regular board meeting is the, the uh, 12th. We have a scholarship reception. Want to make sure that you all have that on your calendar on November the 13th. Uh, coordinating board leadership conference, uh, November 21st. And then you have our, our winter dates in December as well. Any questions on our upcoming calendar? Uh, not seeing any questions. Our meeting is adjourned at 2.27 p.m. Thank you.